happening. All right. Okay. So the first thing we need to consider uh, when we are talking about raising travel requests on behalf of uh, uniform personnel is that there is a slight difference when we talk about uniform personnel, right? We have to differentiate individual uniform personnel from all the others, okay? So here in this um, screenshot coming from the from Umoja ATC, you can see the six different uh, employee subgroups that are under the uh, military police employee group, right? So all these six are considered uniform personnel, but then there are three of them, these uh, three employee subgroups, M2, M3, and M6, that are considered individual uniform personnel, and in particular, these three employee subgroups, the difference is that um, they have been granted access to the employee cell service, meaning that they, they have received their activation email for the Unite um, ID account, and all of them are able to log into the portal, to log into the employee cell service, and raise their travel requests, okay? And later on in this presentation, we will um, see that IUPs will be only will only be able to raise travel requests for within mission that don't have a commercial ticket involved. Okay, so as a travel administrator uh, for UPs, you need to know that IUPs, right, the uh, uniform personnel that are military observers, UN police, or government provided personnel. All these uh, three categories have access to the portal, and in case they need to uh, travel within mission with no commercial means, they are able to raise their own travel request, and they they shouldn't be needing your support to raise um, that a travel request. Okay, so this is the first thing I wanted to make uh, clear. Okay, for the other three uh, employee groups that are uniform personnel, but that are not um, individual, right? So in this case, we are talking about M1, right? Military staff officers, form police uh, unit, and uh, military contingent and troops. They, they don't have access to the portal. So all the travel requests will always be raised by the travel administrator, okay? So no matter if it's for within mission or outside mission or um, for the deployment, okay, these three categories, all their travel requests will always be managed on behalf by your by travel administrators. You. All right. So any questions so far? You can still hear me, right? Okay. Um, so feel free to uh, to post any question in the in the chat, and uh, we are not that many, so feel free to um, intervene at, at any point. Okay. All right. So let's move ahead and let's talk about the different um, travel types that we that we have in 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 Moja for individual uniform personnel. So the first travel type that uh, we want uh, to talk about is the deployment and repatriation travel. Okay, so the deployment and repatriation travel, it's always raised by the travel administrator role, no matter if we are talking about an IUP or uh, a uniform personnel, okay? Deployment and repatriation travel is always uh, done on behalf by the travel administrator role, okay? And here is where we can, uh, as a travel administrator, raise a unique travel request to deploy an entire group. Okay, so uh, as a travel administrator, you can raise a group travel request and include as many um, travelers as uh, you need to uh, to travel with the same itinerary and with the same uh, baggage entitlement. This group travel functionality, okay, will afterwards be approved by certifying officer and by the TPO, and uh, 
once the TPO approves the, travel, the group travel request, the system will generate individual uh, trip numbers. And, and after you have the individual trip numbers, uh, as, a, as, sorry, as a travel administrator, you can raise the individual shipment request, one for each traveler, one for each uh, uniform personnel. Okay. Same thing as for the spend report. So the spend reports will also be linked. So as a travel administrator, you will have to raise an individual spend report for each traveler. All right. So later on, we will discuss more about uh, the deployment and repatriation travel. And the idea is to also do um, to log in into the um, training environment and to see how that looks like in the system. Okay. So I think most of you already, maybe you were already trained by your um, local process experts, but we want to reemphasize some of the ideas and to do a refresh training in case you um, had still some doubts about it. Okay. The second type of travel we want to talk about is the um, within mission and with no commercial uh, means. And uh, this is the type of travel we were mentioning before, that the individual uniform personnel, the ones uh, we were mentioning before that were considered uh, um, individual, uh, they will have access to the portal and they will be able to raise the travel request by themselves. So the IUP that have now um, access to the portal, they will be able to connect to Umoja and they will be able to raise within mission travel request, but only if no commercial ticket is involved. Right? The, if the IOP raised the travel request for the within mission travel, they can also raise the related expense report. So this is, as a travel administrator for UPs, this is something um, you can delegate on the IUP. So if the IUP needs to travel, and uh, I think they do that frequently, if the IUP needs to travel within mission with no commercial um, uh, mean, right? They can, like for example, the UN flight or the or a UN vehicle, they can uh, raise the travel request by themselves, and they can afterwards submit the spend report by themselves. You don't have to do it um, on behalf of them. And are you can raise the spend report, and they also have the option to submit the stand, a standalone spend report in case uh, they need to travel uh, urgently, and the travel request on the trip is for less than three days, and there is no advance. Okay, so the same rules as for today. So a standalone spend report in case of um, an urgent trip can be raised always if the trip is for three days or less and there is no travel advance requested. Okay. So IUPs will only be able to submit within mission uh, travel when no commercial means um, are required. For any other type of travel, if the travel is outside mission area, for any other official travel that is not within mission, then it's going to be uh, your role as a travel administrator for UPs to raise the travel on behalf of the IUP. And uh, the same, if the, if the IUP requires a commercial flight, a commercial ticket, no matter if the, uh, the trip is within mission or outside mission area, in, in, any, in all cases when a commercial ticket is required, the only one that can do it is the travel administrator for UPs. And then, again, spend report, if you submit it as a travel administrator the, the travel request, you will have to do the, the spend report. Okay? All right. So let's, uh, let's continue. Let me see. Okay. All right. So let's continue with the presentation. Um, so was it clear the part of the um, of the IUP? So for example, um, do you think that I mean based on what we explained, 
will uh, contingent members have access to the portal to raise their own travel requests for within mission travel? What do you think? Yes or no? You can use the green the green mark and the red uh, cross to say yes or no. Okay. Okay. So my question was if the a contingent member would be able to submit or to access the portal to submit their own travel requests. Okay, so yeah, most of the answers I'm receiving are no. So the answer is is no, right? And it's based on what we explained in the previous slide. Okay, so in the the military contingents are uniform personnel, but not IUPs, and uh, they they will not have access to the to the portal. So all their travel requests will be done on behalf by the travel administrator. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so let's um, talk a little bit more about how the deployment and repatriation travel work. Okay, so the deployment and repatriation travel, as for any other travel in, in Omoja, we always need to have the index number and the proper HI mini master. Okay, so as a travel administrator, you are not responsible for that, but you need to know that without an index number and without a proper HI mini master, you will not be able to to continue with the with creating the travel request. Okay, so as a travel administrator, in the case of a deployment or repatriation, you will raise the group travel request, right? For one group travel request for the entire group, no matter if it's only one. Uh, member in that group or if there are um, hundreds of them. Okay, so the process is the same no matter if you are deploying one or if you are deploying ten. This group travel request that uh, you will raise as a travel administrator will then be reviewed and approved by the certifying officer. Okay, they will receive the, uh, the group travel request in the war center and they will uh, review it and approved, review it and approved, but for the entire group, not individually. And the same thing for the travel processing officer. So the travel processing officer will receive the group travel request in their work center. They will review the details, contact the vendor to um, um, to uh, um, get the final uh, price of the of the ticket. Okay and uh, they will approve the, the group travel request. Okay, So once the TPO approves the group travel request, at this stage, after the TPO approves the group travel request, the system will automatically create the individual travel request, one for each uh, traveler, and each traveler will be assigned uh, an individual travel request number. Okay, so that's important. We will repeat that uh, later on. So once after the TPO approves the, the group travel request, the system automatically generates one individual uh, travel request for each uh, traveler. And from then onwards, all the processes are done individually for each traveler. All the processes meaning shipment, even the the uh, ticket billing, right? The payment of the invoices for the vendors will be done individually. So the vendor will send one invoice for each traveler, and the ticket billing processor in finance will pay uh, each ticket, will pay each invoice. So the shipment request will be done individually, and the same thing for the expense report. So the expense report, you as a as a travel administrator UP, you will raise individual expense report. So once the UP has reached, in case of a deployment, once the um, the uniform personnel has reached the um, the mission, you as a travel administrator, you will raise the individual expense report for each particular um, traveler. 
the approval of the expense report is uh, the same as we have currently. Okay, so if there are no changes compared to what was um, raised and approved in the travel request, the expense report will be automatically approved. If there are changes and there is any additional um, amount to be paid, the travel request will be approved or will be reviewed and approved again by the certifying officer and by the travel claim processor in the mission. Okay, so this is the approval process. That is again a uh, two steps um, approval process for the expense report. Okay, and rem remember that the in order to be able to uh, um, submit an expense report, you will need the travel request fully approved and only after the um, the trip and date um, has been reached. So you cannot, you cannot raise the spend report before the traveler has completed the trip. You can only raise the spend report after the trip and date. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the, um, the different steps. So regarding the HR part, we said that we need an index number. This part is managed by the a HR office in each mission, but we need to make sure that without, or we need to understand at least that without an index number and an HR mini master, uh, we are not able to travel any person in Umoja. Okay. Here you have the roles that are involved. These two roles, the HR index number requester and the HR index number administrator. These are the two roles in Omoja that are involved in requesting and approving uh, index numbers. And the last one, the HR master role or the HR partner, they can um, execute the HR personal action to create the HR record or the HR mini master in, in Omoja. Okay, so this is um, part of the um, uh, the HR um, uh, office tasks, okay, and they are the ones that are managing the HR profile. And as we will see later on, based on the HR profile, the um, Umoja module will get all the data like uh, the employee subgroup, the um, travel entitlements, and so on. All right. So as a travel administrator, we said that you will raise a group travel request for any of these three different uh, employees or groups. It can be military experts, police officers. So here we have the six employees or groups that we have under military police. And you need to understand that in a group travel request, so all the travelers included in a group travel request must belong to the same employees or group. So in a group travel request, you cannot mix travelers from different subgroups. You cannot mix one police officer with one foreign police unit. So in a group travel request, all the travelers should be of the same group. So all of them should be, let's say, for example, if you're traveling a police officer in the same group travel request, all the other travelers should also be um, UN police officers. So all the, the travelers should belong to the same employee subgroup. All travelers should have identical itinerary. We will see that you can only specify one itinerary. And all of them should have the same package entitlements for the shipment. Okay. And then regarding the different expenses that the US travel administrator should include in the um, in the travel request, the airfare ticket cost should be the only one including the travel request. And, uh, and uh, all the other expenses should uh, be included, if any, in the uh, expense report. So the airfare ticket cost that you will indicate, because as a travel administrator, when you, are, when you will raise a travel request on behalf of the um, uniform personnel to deploy them into the mission area or to repatriate them, 
you have to indicate the estimated cost, right? You will need to indicate the estimated cost for the um, airfare ticket. So when you are providing the estimated cost, you have to indicate the cost to travel the entire group, to travel all the IUPs. We will see later on in the system. So if you are traveling 10 uh, travelers, the cost should be the total amount to cover the expenses of all travelers. Okay, so um, yes, Lisa, so you're asking about um, deviation, right? If a deviation is not allowed in this case. So for deployment and repatriation, there is no, all, all of them should have the same itinerary. So no deviation is allowed for the, for the uh, deployment and repatriation track. We will see later on during the demo, okay? And then the shipment, when the, travel, the group travel request is approved, you as a travel administrator, you will also be allowed to raise shipment request on behalf of the, um, of the IUP. Okay. Once you have submitted the group travel request, the, travel request, the group travel request will have to be certified by the certifying officer and uh, the approval can be done um, as a group, so the TSA will only receive one request uh, with the details of all the travelers. And the TPO, the same thing. They will receive one um, request for the entire group. Okay, and the, um, they will review the details, they will contact the vendor and uh, they will put the, the uh, final uh, cost of the ticket. So as a tra the travel administrator, you indicated the estimated cost, the TPO will put the final cost. And once, as we said before, once this group travel request is approved by the TPO, this is important. So once the TPO has approved the, travel, the group travel request, the system will automatically split Okay, we'll split that group travel request into individual travel requests. One, there will be one trip number for each traveler. All right, so up to the point the TPO was reviewing the, uh, the travel, there was only one trip number corresponding to the group travel. After the TPO approves it, the system generates automatically one travel request for each uh, traveler that will appear in the work center of the traveler, of each uh, uniform personnel. And each, tra each um, individual travel will have its unique trim number, okay? And from now onwards, everything is done individually. It's done individually for each uh, traveler. So shipment requests, expense reports, amendments, everything. So. After the, the TPO has approved the group travel, we have a, an individual travel request for each traveler, and all the actions are done for each individual traveler. Okay. So here we have a screenshot of the um, email that is sent to the travel agency requesting the part of the tickets for the deployment or repatriation so they can see the number of travelers and the details of the of the travelers right and the total amount right so you as a travel administrator you indicated the estimated amount and the TPO uh, updates that amount based on the uh, final uh, price provided by the travel vendor okay so this amount that is the total for to travel the 11 travel requests. So to travel 11 uh, travelers, the um, the total cost in this example is uh, 15,103 dollars, right? So when the system generates the individual TR numbers, in the individual TR number, uh, you will see the average, right? So you will see the uh, um, the system will equally divide that amount, right, the 15,103, 
divided by 11 travelers that in this example will be a little bit more than $1,300. So the system will automatically divide that um, total amount by the number of travelers. And that's the uh, cost of the ticket that will appear in the individual travel request. Okay? All right. So um, the travel, the ticket billing processor will receive the invoices from the travel vendor and they will um, pay them with the same process as they currently have. And once the trip has completed, right, has been completed, you as a travel administrator, you will be able to raise the related expense report for each individual um, traveler. Okay, we said that from the moment the TPO approves the group travel request, everything else is done individually for each traveler. You will be able to raise the related expense report. And uh, it's important that you link the expense reports to the, uh, to the travel request, to the individual travel requests that are generated automatically by the system and that appear in the traveler work center of each uh, traveler. Okay, so do not submit standalone expense reports. For the case of a deployment or repatriation, you have to submit the expense report linked to the individual travel requests generated by the system. Okay, we will talk about that later on in the in the demo. And last part, the approval process for the expense report is uh, the same as we have today for international staff. If there are no changes in dates or and no additional expenses, the spend report will be automatically approved. It's what we call the express spend report. If there are changes, then the spend report will have to be uh, reviewed by the TSA, by the certifying officer. And the second uh, reviewal and approval will be done by the travel claim processor. All right, so before we move into the uh, next, next type of travel, let me um, log into the system. Okay, let me log into, uh, um, into the training environment and uh, we will see how that process that we um, explained in the presentation, how that is uh, done or how that shows in the, in the system. Okay, so I'm gonna open the portal and I'm gonna play the role of the of a travel administrator for uniform personnel. Okay. So while we connect, any question, comment, feel free to to intervene or to uh, post any any comment in the chat. Okay. I'm just trying to open the portal. Okay. So you can use as a travel administrator. Um, well, uh, are you familiar with the um, with the portal? How many of you are completely new to the portal? How many of you have been granted for the first time an approval role or a, or a travel administrator role in the portal? Is it completely new for you? Okay, so we have people that are that have already. Okay. Good, thank you for the feedback. Okay, D2. So I'm gonna log in as a travel administrator. So thank you, Lisa. Okay. So I just logged in as a um, travel administrator. So in this case, this user has more roles but I'm gonna go to the travel administrator uh, tab, okay? For those of you that um, have no experience on the travel administrator, so you will use the travel administrator tab to uh, raise travel request on behalf of UPs, okay? And from there, you, you also go to the uh, travel administration um, link section, and from here, is where we can see 
the uh, different options we have, right? Basically, we have two different links, okay? So the second link, this second link is the one we will use to raise deployment and repatriation travel. This is the one, uh, the type of travel request we were we just explained. So when you need to raise a travel request to deploy or to repatriate um, a group of UPs, you will go to this second um, link, okay? This one is the one that allows you to raise a group travel request. Okay, so this one is the one that allows you to create a group travel, group travel request. And this is the one we were we have been explaining so far in this presentation. Okay. The second one, the um okay, the second option, this second option here. The um, this, the first the first link we have here. Okay, this create and process um, UP all official business travel on behalf. This one is used to um, this one is used to create, for example, um, all official uh, travel request. It's also used to um, to submit the expense reports, the individual expense reports, the shipment requests, and everything you do here it's for each individual. Okay, so here if you use this link, you cannot. You don't do the, the no, nothing to do with travel with the group travel, okay? No group travel allowed. Okay. So the second link is used to raise group travels to deploy or repatriate uniform personnel, and the first link is used for any other um, kind of uh, um, transaction, right? So in case you need to raise an official travel request, in case you need to raise an expense report, achievement request for each individual, you always use the first option. All right. So we wanted to show to you the part of the um, group travel request. So let me go into the repatriation and deployment travel. And uh, you will see that from here, um, okay, the system will show or will display all the group travel requests that uh, you have raised so far. Okay, so in 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 here you have in this um, uh, table or in this list, the system is displaying all the group travel requests that have been raised so far. And you can even see here the number of travelers, right? So in this column, the number of travelers column, you can see how many travelers, how many uniform personnel have been included in each group travel request. So the first one has two travelers, the third one only one. That's why we were saying that this functionality can be used to raise, to raise um, a group travel request for a group and we mean, by a group we mean uh, one or more, okay? So it can be used to just deploy one person or to deploy five, five uniform personnel or to deploy hundreds of them, okay? So in order to, to raise a new um, group travel request, we will click on start, okay, on the start button and the system, the first thing the system will ask um, the travel administrator is to indicate the travel type. Okay, I, and in here you can see that there are only five um, 
travel types. So this travel type is very similar concept compared to the um, employee subgroup we were mentioning before. I remember. Let me um, let me go back to the presentation. Okay, and here you can see the different the six employee subgroups that we were talking about before, right? From M1 to M6. So the military staff officers, the military observers, UNMEM, and you can see in the the travel types that um, UNMEM is travel type number one. Okay, so why there are five and not six? Because military staff, contingent members, and troops are together in one, or have been mixed together in one travel type, while in the employee subgroups, if you can see, military staff officers are employee subgroup one, while contingents and troops are five. So employee subgroup one and five have been mixed in here in the portal in travel type uh, number three. Okay, so it, the, I mean the, the system hasn't been made that easy because even the numberings do not match, right? So for example, UMEM is here travel type one, while in the employee subgroup, UMEM is employee subgroup number two. So if we want to travel uh, military observers, if we want to deploy military observers, we should be selecting here travel type number one. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is the type of uh, uniform personnel that we want to deploy. Because we need to select, as a travel administrator, this is important, we need to select the proper uh, travel type in here. Otherwise, the system will raise an error saying that the travel type does not correspond to the employee subgroup of the travelers. Okay. So in our example, and the example I'm, uh, I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to use these two index numbers to travel uh, the person. Okay, so we ha I have here two index numbers that I want to travel, I want to deploy in, in the mission. And uh, the first thing I would need to do is to know um, the type of the, uh, the, the employee group, right? The type of uniform personnel. Um, this is something that as a trial administrator I should know, right? Because I, I, I should know what kind of um, traveler I'm, I'm including. In this case, I know it's a UMEM, right? It's, a, it's an UMEM, what I'm going to uh, travel, okay? Later on, I will show to you how to check for the um, employee subgroup in the, um, in the um, uh, HR part in ECC. And after selecting the, um, the type of travel, you'll see that the system displays the second screen where you can indicate the list of travelers, the type of travel. So in here, we can select if we are deploying or repatriating um, the UPs. So we can deploy for 12 months, six months. We have different options. Okay. So let's select the 12 months and uh, shipment. You can see the different options you, you have as a shipment entitlements. So as a travel administrator, you can select the one corresponding to your case. Uh, let's select uh, 100 kilos. You can also specify if the UPs will be uh, carrying their own um, weapons. Okay, normally I don't think they will, right, in the, with an airplane. And once you have specified this, sorry, I forgot to include the destination mission. Okay, so you can type it or use the uh, search. Okay, so let's put Minusta as a destination mission. Okay, so let me select the OR unit. So here we are specifying the um, destination mission. And here I will uh, include all the different travelers, all the different UPs. You can type the um, personnel number. 
if you don't know the, the personal number, you can always use the match code to search by last name or first name. You can use the search functionality to look for the UP. Or you can type the personal number and click on enter. So by clicking on enter, the system already has all the information about first name, last name, the employee group, and you see that the employee group matches the travel type we selected before. Okay, so this is uh, admin. That's why the system is allowing me to um, to include this traveler. Okay, I can include as many travelers as I want. So here I can include the second one. So I can use this screen. I can use this portal to raise a group travel request only for one, or I can include as many as I want, right? And all these travelers will um, ha wish, will have the same itinerary, will have the same um, baggage entitlement, and everything. Okay. So in here, I have included two different um, uh, uniform personnel. Okay. I will click on general data, and the system will ask me to save the travel request before uh, moving ahead. And once I click on save, the system will generate this number, right? This 1924, this is the group travel number. So this is the travel request number that corresponds to the group travel, okay? And the group travel has, in, a, in my example, two different travels. So right now I have already the new group travel number. I can move ahead and specify all the details. So I have to specify still the itinerary. I have to specify still other um, other details like the cost assignment and um, and uh, other expenses. Okay. So let me move ahead. As a deployment, I have to specify journey type. Normally, it will be one way. The travel purpose, I can indicate deployment, for example. What I can specify more. Okay. I can specify other instructions in the comments if needed. And at the bottom, you can see that you only have a one space for the itinerary. That's why we were saying that the itinerary. Uh, has to be the same for the entire group. Okay, and in here we can indicate the uh, estimated departure date. We can put, for example, uh, 26 June. Okay, 26 June. Um, all right, and uh, we can put the the, um, the destination. Sorry, the the, the departure city and the destination. So let's say that the IUP is traveling from Spain. You can type it and then select. The system will look for existing uh, cities and countries and you can select it or you can use the match box. All right. Let's, you can select the different mode of travel. In this case, let's say we are traveling uh, with a commercial aircraft and uh, the UP will arrive on the day after, on the 27th, and the arrival country would be Port of Prince. Okay. And uh, if the if the UP will be entitled for DSA or not, so for deployment, let's assume that uh, there will be no um, there will be no um, no DSA to be paid. Okay, so the personal deviation we click on no, and it has to be the same. Otherwise, it has to be the same for the for the entire group. Okay. Okay. So we have some questions regarding the. Um, 
so the cities and countries are a master data right so in this in the system you have the different cities and countries that are um, existing if there are ones that do not appear there in the in the um, in the list there is a way right there is a way to to ask okay for new uh, cities that are not appearing but uh, all of them should be appearing there so you, you shouldn't be typing here free text you should always be selecting something from uh, from there in the in the list okay so all the you should always be selecting uh, um, the, the different um, uh, cities or countries from the list if if your city or country does not appear there you should ask for it right the same way you ask for um, for other master data like cost centers or new travel offices there there is a, a procedure to change the uh, the cities and countries that are appearing there okay you don't have to do it just uh, send send me an email I'll, I'll send you the, the instructions okay there is a website explaining the the procedure in on how to add new cities okay so let's select again Spain okay and let's go to additional data um, so I have specified the itinerary the uh, no travel advance is allowed right for deployment and the travel processing office that will derive the TPOs that will review and approve the travel request that will lie with the vendor the one that will purchase the tickets so in here you as a travel administrator make sure you specify the travel office that is responsible for purchasing the tickets in our example we are going to select the travel office for Minusta so as a travel administrator for UPS make sure you select the travel office that will purchase the ticket for the uh, group travel in the in this case is a commercial ticket in the estimated cost this is what we were mentioning before about the in the airfare ticket cost right this estimate it should be the estimated cost to travel all the group right in our example we are traveling two people okay so let's assume that each um, ticket will cost um, 2500 so here as a travel administrator I will have to specify 5000 okay 5000 um, 5000 dollars so in here we need to specify the cost for all the travelers okay so in here the cost for all the travelers in our example let's say it's 2500 each we have two travelers so in total 5000 okay all right um, that's it we will specify the airfare ticket cost all the other expenses should be indicated in the uh, expense report in the cost assignment make sure as a travel administrator you indicate the cost center this is also very important you should indicate the cost center that should be paying for that uh, deployment so indicate um indicate here sorry indicate here the cost center fund that should pay okay for that deployment and that cost center will have an impact on the will derive the account assignment will derive the list of certifying officers right the certifying officers that can approve that will approve okay that will approve the travel request 
So this cost center and fund is the one that will be charged for the deployment travel and it will also trigger the certifying officers that will approve the travel request. So make sure as a travel administrator that in here you put the cost center that will be charged for that um, trip, okay, for that deployment trip. I'm going to make sure I change it, okay, I will check, all right, and I will accept, okay, accept, all right. Uh, so we have questions regarding um, how can you check the who is paying for your uh, deployment the way the same way you are doing now right so right now you should be also charging for the deployment travel you should be also charging the right cost center okay so you um, you should be knowing right we are not changing that part we are also we are only changing how we are or the system we are using to to uh, to travel but cost centers should be already known by the missions, right? So you should already know which cost center, and if you don't, uh, please ask your certifying officers on who should be paying for your deployment and repatriation travel, or if you have to raise a travel request for any official travel, you should be also asking the uniform personnel who is uh, who is going to be paying for that um, uh, trip, okay? In case there is any any um, expense involved, like um, MSA or any other expense. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so we have specified the um, the cost assignment. That is very important. We have also the shipment office. And uh, I will need to specify the, uh, I will need to answer the, the questions about the voluntary downgrade of the entitlement class. So there are some mandatory questions here that you need to review regarding the, the, um, the travel um, policy, okay? For example, uh, you need to specify if there is any other UN travel in conjunction in our example, no, and if you're submitting the travel request uh, with uh, with less than 25 days in advance, you will need to provide a uh, justification, okay? And then you will be able to submit the group travel request, okay? So this was the last part. We have a question regarding um, com if there is any field to include any um, comments. So yes, in the in the first screen where we were main, where we were including the uh, journey type, okay. The um, all right, the system um, there was a place to include the uh, comments, okay. All right, so I don't know. I think it we took more time than expected, and we had an error submitting the travel request. So sorry about that. Okay. Can you still hear me? All right. Yes. Thank you. So, I mean, we were not able to to reach the last step, but we were only was one step um, before submitting it. Okay. So we went through all the different fields to submit a group travel request okay and we I think we can even find it here uh, let me order on the other way around so our trip number um, was so our our start date was the 25th right I think let me see 20 okay let me filter I think our travel start date was the 25th. Let me see if I can find it, 25th. Because I'm using the same user to raise many travel requests. Okay, all right. 
or no this is not okay so it seems is is this one so we can we could even modify it and uh, raise it okay but regarding the group travel request i mean we almost uh, went through all the different um, fields okay so i want to spend our last 15 minutes in the other link okay we have so the uh, we went through the um, screens to raise a group travel request so this part we uh, covered a little bit the the process on how to raise um, group travel request and now i want to show to you the other part so we said that the first link should be used uh, to raise any all the other transactions like um, official travel request or um, spend reports shipment requests so what you can see here is the your employee list all right so one um, when you are connected as a travel administrator and you go to the um, to the first link okay you the system will display the travelers for which you have already raised a travel request and spend report or a shipment request so in here i can see all the travelers right i have a lot of travelers for which i have already processed something okay and i can see here the the um the index number their first name first name and last name so all these ones are the ones for which i have already uh, processed um, a travel request or an expense report okay i can if i i no longer need for example blanca the first traveler if uh, for example if it's a, a uniform personnel and this person has already left the organization i can remove it from my list right I don't need any more over there. I can, all right, I can scroll and uh, remove Blanca from my uh, list. So I can use the remove employee to remove Blanca. And uh, if I need to raise a travel request for a person, for an IUP that is not in my list, I can always add a, um, I can always add the employee okay so we have a question in the chat regarding can you as a travel administrator look for travel requests raised by other uh, travel administrators okay so this is a very good question so in here you don't see your the travel request that you've raised you see the travel request for a list of uh, people right so if you want to see the list of travel requests for specific person you go in here you click on add employee and in here you type the index number or you use the match code as before to look for the person okay so i can use the uh, index number as we were doing before to include that person in my employee list okay so the, that person was already added to the to my list and i can look for the person in the list right so i can use the filter i can use the filter and uh, search for that person so in the index number i can search for that person and here is the person with a very weird uh, first name and last name but anyway okay it's only the training environment so if i select that person in my employee list in the details right in the details of that person i will be able to see all the travel requests raised for that person no matter if they are if they were raised for the person by themselves or if the the travel request were raised by another travel administrator or by yourself so in here in the details in all trips the the uh, you will see all the trips for that particular person 
if we change and we look for um, other people, okay, not not that one, and we look for I don't know for the um, for the last one, okay, you will see that for that person there are several travel requests, and you have here travel requests that are related to deployment, travel requests that are related to training, travel requests that are within mission. So in here you will be able to see as a travel administrator all the travel requests for that particular person, for in this case for Danny Parejo, okay? the one we selected in the employee list and having that index number. So the answer is yes, Almeida. So you you can, as a travel administrator, you can see the um, all the travel requests raised for that person. Okay, and you can even uh, use the tabs in here to filter by type. You can see here the official travels that are five, right? All the ones that are official travel training within mission. You can have, you can filter by um, travel request or even a, a shipment request. So for this person, there are two different shipment requests that were raised, spend reports that are related to a travel request or standalone spend reports. So you can differentiate which ones are related to official travel and which are related to uh, an spend report. Okay. So from the main tab, from the all trips tab, as a travel administrator, we have the option to we have the option to raise a new official travel. Okay, so in this case, um, if we want to raise a, an official travel, you can do it as a travel administrator by clicking on create official travel. Okay. If you click on create official travel, you will initiate a travel request for that person. So as a travel administrator, you can raise any official travel request. It could be training, official travel, or within mission, right? So in this case, this person, it's a UNMEM, right? So it's an IUP, and they should be able to log into the portal. So if you are going to raise a uh, within mission DFS travel request, you could also ask the IUP to connect to the portal and do it by themselves, right? So here, as a travel administrator, you have all the options to raise uh, travel requests. Let's say that in this case, it's a travel request to travel outside mission area. So you can um, do it from here and in the general data, you will be able to to indicate the details for that official business travel, okay? So in here, we are raising a travel request only for one person, so we don't have any more the concept of the group travel, okay? So in here, we raise travel request for only one person, and the process is very similar, right? Number of travelers, in this case, it's one, okay? Normally, the official travels will be round trip, okay? You will here specify the initial date for the uh, work date, okay? We can specify the um, even the time, and let's say the IUP is traveling for uh, for four days, okay? The travel purpose, you can specify here the travel purpose as indicated by the IUP. If you here you have the comments and special instructions. All right, remember, um, I think it was uh, Esperance that was asking where to indicate the comments. So in here, next to the journey type, we have space to indicate comments. Okay, the same thing for the group travel request, and in the itinerary you can indicate the itinerary for the uh, official travel. So in here, you can indicate that the itinerary, let's say it's within mission, 
So let's say the departure will be on the same day from, let's say, Port au Prince. And here you have the uh, commercial. So there is even the possibility to indicate commercial aircraft okay, for, um, for the IUP. Remember that uh, as an IUP, they will not have the option to raise um, travel request with a commercial aircraft. So if they need commercial aircraft, they will always rely on you as a travel administrator to do it on their behalf. Okay, so the process is very similar. So let's say they are gonna use a UN vehicle and they are gonna they're gonna arrive on the same day. And the, they will reach another city in Haiti. Okay, there are several. Okay. And uh, in this case, they will need to select the options for MSA entitlement regarding the type, depending on the type of um, the type of travel and the type of accommodation provided at destination, the type of meals that are provided also at destination, they they will be entitled to one or another rate, right? Depending on the on the services provided at destination. So that's why there are here different rates for the MSA. You have the MSA full, MSA adequate standard accommodation, MSA share, or standard accommodation, or the last one. Okay, so depending on the option selected here, the uh, subsistence allowance calculated by the system will be different, right? So for example, if I select MSA full, right? If I select MSA full, the applicable subsistence amount um, defaulted by the system, we will see that will be different than if we select another option. So let me keep full and go and see What's the amount selected by the uh, by the uh, system automatically? Let me put the uh, return leg. So let's see, say that the staff member will come back on the 29th of June. All right, and we we'll return to the departure city, and that there will be no personal deviation. Okay, so. The, the staff member will stay there for uh, three days, for uh, from the 25th to the 29th, and by clicking on additional data, the system will drive us to the second page where the uh, you as a travel administrator, you will be able to indicate if the IUP will be, will be carrying a firearm. If a travel advance is requested, you can see that for official travel, by raising a travel request, a travel advance can be paid right to the to the IUP. So if a travel advance is to be paid, then the system will allow you to select if you are paying the uniform personnel with a electronic uh, bank transfer, and here you will be able to specify the bank account or if you want to pay, to pay the, the uniform personnel with other uh, uh, payment mode, and in here you can indicate cash, you can indicate uh, the payment method, right? So for example, for um, a contingent or troop or a troop, you could even indicate here paymaster, right? And then the certifying officer will select the appropriate payment method. Okay, so let's say that these particular IUPs will get their advance in cash. Okay, and as you can see, the, adv the advance was automatically defaulted to 75% of the estimated cost. So the IUPs will not receive the, uh, the total uh, cost, but the system is defaulting to 75% of the estimated cost. And this estimated cost is already populated and it's, uh, it's based 
on the so you can see that the cost is the subsistence allowance, 864. So this amount is based on the applicable subsistence rate uh, indicated in the itinerary. So right now, the system has calculated it as uh, 864, but if we change the um, the applicable subsistence from full to adequate standard accommodation, this the amount to be paid as uh, applicable subsistence, you will see that it will automatically change, right? So if we change the option um, of the applicable subsistence, then the estimated cost are different. The estimated cost and also the uh, advances. Okay, so this applicable subsistence is based on the selection of the uh, applicable subsistence in the itinerary. So depending on the option selected here, the um, the total amount as subsistence allowance will vary. Okay. As a travel administrator, you can also enter additional costs, right? So you can enter, for example, if there is uh, if the IUP is traveling uh, with a flight, UN flight or commercial flight, you can include the terminal expenses. You can include other expenses. Okay, you can include select other expenses uh, by selecting the expense, the expense type, for example, medical expenses or other expenses here. Include the estimated cost, and that will be included in the travel request. Okay, and then you can go through. Remember always to make sure that the cost assignment, then the proper cost center is selected under the account assignment. So the cost assignment should be the proper one. And afterwards, you can uh, submit the travel request for approval. Okay. Let me save as draft. All right. Okay. So from here, you can review and send. So there will be no problem in sending the, the travel request. Okay, we, we still need to answer the questions and some and indicate the, the late submission justification. All right, and from there we can uh, send it for for approval. Okay. Wow, the same error. Okay, we have this has to be something related to the um, to the uh, uh, training environment. Okay, so we are having the same issue with the uh, as with the group travel request. Okay, so we are still we are already three minutes late. So let me take just two minutes to show to you the expense report part, and uh, afterwards we can close the session. So regarding the expense report part, okay. So how can you make sure that you, uh, raise the expense report related to a travel request? So the process is very similar as for raising a travel request. So you go to the uh, work center, okay, and uh, you will have a button to create the expense report. Okay, no need. I mean, from here you can see if the if your travel request was fully approved and the trip end date is already in the past. So if that two conditions apply, you can create. You can click on create expense report. And from there, you will need to select. So in here, the system will display all the trips for which uh, the trip end date is in the past and that are fully approved. So to submit the related expense report, you should always find the trip number here, select it, and click on Start. Right. So if your travel requests do not appear here, then go to the work center and see what's the problem of that travel request. Maybe it wasn't fully approved, maybe the trip date is still in the future. So in order to submit the related spend report, you should find 
your travel request in here, select it and click on start to submit the uh, related expense report. You should only you should only use the standard standalone report for uh, exceptional cases, all right? And uh, the system will warn you. So when you select standalone expense report, you don't select any trip, and you click on start, the system will warn you that that standalone expense report will no will not be linked to any travel request. Okay, so make sure that you only use standalone spend report when needed. Okay, so if there is a travel request raised and approved, you should always raise it linked to that travel request and not as a standalone spend report. Okay, so um, I think we are over time. Uh, we are uh, over the time. Um, so thank you for joining. I don't know if you have any other question. Um, we didn't cover all the different fields, but at least uh, we saw the main features that uh, you have available in the portal to raise group travel requests and to raise all other transactions. Okay. And uh, remember that uh, I mean I will be sending to all of you the presentation and, and also the recording to this session, and you can, uh, if you have uh, more questions, you can always contact your local process expert in your mission or you can uh, send an email to us and uh, we'll be happy to, to help you, okay? So I think we can uh, close this session now if there are no further questions. And thank you everybody for, for joining.